what you have to do is whenever you're designing uh, technology, you have to look at the environment you're designing it for, and you have to understand how that other environment may affect your technology, your system or subsystem. And so, for instance, um, um, things like uh, um, uh, machinery that has to operate uh, reliably uh, and is exposed to the Martian environment, you have to look at temperature and pressure of course, but you also have to look at the fineness of the dust particles and see how that would um, potentially cause problems for your machinery if it's exposed. So depending on what your idea is and what you're designing, you have to carefully study what the conditions are on the surface of Mars, how it is different from what you are pro the environment you propose to test it in, and whether or not you need to replicate as much as possible the exact conditions on the surface of Mars. Uh, obviously, um, we did a, a great job as we could to understand the atmosphere, the wind conditions, and the planetary surface conditions in order to be able to land rovers on the surface of Mars. So we're gradually building up better and better analytical models of how to predict what the atmosphere looks like so we can decelerate uh, the landers through that atmosphere. We understand what kind of drag forces they will have, what kind of winds they might see, and what pressures and densities the atmosphere will be at those uh, conditions in order to determine what the loads are on the vehicles that are landing. And so depending on um, what technology you're developing, whether it's a uh, um, uh, an environment like a habitat, or whether it's a greenhouse, if you will, or something to grow crops, or whether it's actually a lander that's going to land on the surface of Mars. And so you have to make those um, judgment decisions as you're testing, and if you do not know the precise environment and you can't replicate it exactly, maybe you replicate extremes or go or exceed what the conditions are or might be.